All right, so here's this problem that keeps showing up on all these AP Calc exams on the free response um, section. So problems like this, they give you a graph, and um, they're going to ask you to do tons of stuff. And one thing that they'll probably ask you to do at some point is to prove either to find the line tangent, find this line tangent here, or to prove that their equation is the line tangent, but that's not what you and I are going to do right now. Instead, we're going to find the area of S. We're going to find the area of S where this is S down here. And if we can just bound S out really quick, you can see it more easily. Um, it says S is the region bounded by the graph of F. So it's bounded by the graph of F. So there's one boundary right there. Uh, also by the line L. So it's bounded by this also, right? It's bounded by that. Uh, and it also it's also bounded by the x-axis. So I hope that gives us a pretty good picture of what we're looking for. But just to color it in a little bit, it looks like this. Sorry for where I went over, right? We're looking for this area here. And there are lots of ways to go about this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some numbers that I came up with, and then I'm going to prove to you on a calculator how I came up with them. I know that the, the this graph of f of x has a 0 at, at, at 4 right here. This function, which is this one, right, has a 0 at 6, right? 3 times 6 is 18, and 18 minus 18 is 0, right? Um, and you can try that with 4 also. So this is 6. And also, I know that these two lines intersect at the point 3, 9. Um, okay, so right now you're going, how the hell did you know all that? Uh, because I worked this problem out before I, I started talking to you. But this is how I would do this, because on the open, uh, on the free response section of the AP exam, you're allowed to use your calculator. So let me just show you what I would have done with my calculator. So take a second, get this gathered up, if you don't mind, and then we're going to leave this, and we're going to go to our calculator. So uh, one thing I did was this, is that I renamed um, Y, I renamed it G of X. So it's going to be important in a second when I show you what I did with my calculator. And I left this green function, I, le I did leave this F of X. So this is what I did. Okay, so I went to my calculator. I'm using a... Um, this is a TI-inspired CAS. Really good calculator. I don't work for those people, but it's a good calculator. This one happens to be a CX. Uh, it's not necessary for you to have one. Uh, if you have a, a CAS but not a, CA, a CX, you can upgrade it for free at TIeducation.com or something like that, and it's free to upgrade it. All right, so the first thing I did was I put this equation. So I just type it in, and I save it as f of x. The way I saved it was I hit Control Store. And it, look, if you hit Control Store, you get that arrow right there. Yeah, so that's how I got this answer. I put in this f of x. I did the same thing with my line. Remember, I named it g of x there. Uh, and then what I did was I want to know where they intersect. So if you're looking at your picture of the graph, we remember that that line and the curve intersected. And I want to know where. And so I typed in solve. Open the parentheses, f of x equals g of x. This comma is important comma. It means in terms of x. Closed it, and it came back and it gave me these two possible solutions. It gave me x is negative 2 or x is equal to 3. But if you look at the graph that we're working, we know that it's in all, the whole thing that we're looking at is in quadrant 1. So it means that it had to be this x value. So that's why I chose the 3 back there. And then what I did was I wanted to know, if you look at your graph again, I want to know where does f of x have a height of 0? Because remember that it says that um, for S, it's bounded by the x-axis, so I want to make sure I'm trapping all those parts that I need. So f of x is equal to 0 when x is 0 or 4. And if I, you just look at the picture of the graph, we know we're not at 0, so we can assume that we're at 4. Did the same thing with g of x. Solve g of x is equal to 0, comma. Remember, remember in terms of x, and it came back x is equal to 6, and it gave us that. And then I went about this two ways. So here's one way I went about this. Um, and what about this This one? I'm going to go back to the graph in just a second, so if you can hang on with me for a second. I took the integral here, the definite integral, from 3 to 6 of g of x. Remember, that's the... Let me see if I can draw this out a little bit. You can see it. Right? Remember that the function was doing this. Right? The, fun the green part of the function was doing this, wasn't it? It's doing this, like that. Um, the other part of the function that we are looking at, the line, was doing this, wasn't it? And so if you don't mind, I'll put this in, pretend this is the x-axis here, yeah? And what I found out was that they intersect at the, they intersect at 3, right? There's that 3. So I put in 
f of 3, and I found out that f of 3 is 9, so I got the point 39 here, right? Uh, remember, this is a line, a perfect line right here, yeah? Uh, and we found out, what else did we find out is true? Oh, we found out this was true, right? We found out that this function right here, that f of x function has a 0 at x is 4, and the line at x equals 6, right? All I'm going to is using this and this now to prove these things, yeah? But remember now that we have, we're developing a small issue here, and that issue is this, is that we have this as an issue right here, right? We want the, this whole area here, want this whole area here. Remember, this is a straight line. There's no curve to it, so sorry. So now we can have this as a right triangle, can't we? And remember that if this is the point 39, then if I go straight down, it's the point 30, isn't it? So I can look at this triangle right here. I can take this triangle right here, and I can take its whole area. So remember, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height is equal to the area. So area is equal to 1 half base times height. Well, the base is, has a, a length of from 3 to 6. So it has a length of 3, doesn't it? It has a height from, remember, this is the point 3, 0. From 3, 0 to 3, 9, so times 9, doesn't it? And then, you guys, this 1 half from the formula is this 1 half right here. So that gives us 27 halves, doesn't it? So that's one way we could have done that. We could have taken 27 halves. That's the whole area here, right? That's all of this here, right? But remember, we don't get this area. We don't get this, right? This is this area is for Bolton, not included, right? We're only getting this area in here. So how do I take that out? Well, I take this, right? And I subtract out the integral from 3 to 4 of f of x. And you're like, holy crap, how would I do it? You put in your calculator. That's, that's kind of the point I'm making. This is a calculator question, and I'm going to come back and prove that, that this comes out to be true. Or what you could do is this, right? The other way you could do that, right? This is f of x here, isn't it? This is g of x. So you could take, you could take g of x, 3 to 6, Right, of g of x, the definite integral here, right? That's the top one, right? That's the, if you took that, that's this whole, this whole area here. It's a triangle again. But you don't get the area of f of x, so minus, right, of f of x. I'm going to show it to you in a second, but do you see how that's taking this area out? This is f of x, and you want the area from here to here, so right? And it should give you, oh, right, it should give you, oh, look, I did it. You this number right there, yeah? So this is us doing it this way. And what I'm going to come back and prove to you in just a second is we could go back and do it the other way too. And I think this is brilliant. This idea of taking this triangle out is a really great idea because it's very easy to do. I mean, you could just take the area of the triangle, subtract out this part right here. So let's see if we can't do that. All right. So I said it was 27 halves, didn't I? 27 halves, right? Minus, and it just give us a chance to use this. You'd hit your menu button. I'm going to hit this tool button. I'm going to go to calculus. I'm going to go over to integral. And I'm going to take the integral from 3 to 4. Remember what we were looking at. From 3 to 4, right? That's the part of the thing we wanted out, right? Of f of x, f of x dx control and there's our number again right so this is where we just used the integral of the top one minus the integral of the bottom one right and that taking out that overlapping section there and this is where we use more geometry either way is fine remember you can use the you can use the hell out of your calculator on that AP exam but you, you're going to have to substantiate it so you're going to have to show something um, so you could show this this work, or you could show this work. I would definitely put some drawings on my um, on my graph. And remember, you know, it's 45 minutes to do these problems, so you don't have a ton of time. So you've got to have a good strategy. But my, I guess, my bigger point to you is that these are the problems that come up over and over and over again. There won't be any surprises, I don't think. Okay, there shouldn't be.